Deer FX. Coming at you an hour before the European Open here to talk about what we think is going to happen today. Um, ECB, obviously, today. We got some U.S. data at the same time as the press conference. Um, so it should be, should be mildly interesting. Um, U.S. trade non-farm productivity and labor cost. That labor cost um, release is important for the inflation numbers. Um, some Fed speakers, we got Brainard, uh, 6 p.m. So, mainly it's Draghi and ECB. They're going to downgrade their growth assessment and we just need to figure out if he's going to make an official move and do an LTRO for two or three years. Most people are expecting a two-year LTRO. Most people are expecting this in April. So today might be kind of a dud, but we got to be ready for it. So let's think about what we're going to do if there's an LTRO, if there isn't an LTRO, etc., etc. First chart here, though, is the Aussie. Um, we talked about it yesterday. You wanted to buy 30s, 20s, 10s, sells 40s, 50s, 60s. So you know this takes 8 hours, 12 hours instead of 1 hour like it used to because the volatility is so low. Uh, the same trade principles apply. Retail sales was marginally weak overnight. But yet here we are, 70, 46. Um, my explanation for that is a lot of guys have these straddles on and, and are trying to break even on this trade now, uh, which would have been around 70 the figure or 70.10. And we may have to wait for Monday of next week for this to take the next leg lower. We do have some Chinese news coming out Friday morning. Um, we get Chinese imports, exports that could affect this. We obviously have jobs um, and FP on Friday, and we have Powell speaking 4 p.m. Swiss time. So Friday could not could move this as well, but in general, we're fading it up here uh, between 40 and 60, and we're just going to play this sort of circular, uh, sort of slow, grindy move lower. Euro. We got a bit nervous yesterday when we couldn't get fall through on that uh, leaked ECB, or what does Bloomberg call it? Sources. Who those sources are? Anyway, the sources comment can only take us down to 85. Perfect doji yesterday. This could go either way today now, right? So if he says nothing and the downgrade is not as strong as people think, all of these shorts from basically. Uh, end of Feb till now, the last four days are going to get caught. And obviously, if he does an LTRO, um, this is going to go through 112.50, 112.32, and it's going to go through 112. So that seems a little bit obvious. That seems a little bit like too many people are expecting that. So now I'm slightly worried. We resold, we bought figures yesterday, and then we resold 12s, and we sold some 20s, and then we just sort of, all a bit of nonsense. I mean, what's the whole point of all this shit, trying to make three ticks or whatever on um, euro dollar trades and get a better average? Seems incredibly boring, but, you know, this is the, this is the reality of the market we're in right now. Currently, we're square. Um, watching boons as we always do. You saw boons shoot up yesterday um, above 166. This is the new contract in boons, 163. You see this, 163.59. This is equivalent to around, I don't know, 166.10. Um, this is why when it comes to boons, we look at the yield, right? We don't we don't look as closely at the price, and it's harder to trade technically for those of you who are new new to this. Um, where's our little yield?
old here. 12.7 basis points. DE10Y on um, on trading trading view. So we're still below this 15 basis points level. Obviously we have a new price because it's a new contract. Um, see, this is the start of it right down here. This is not a gap to be filled, it's just a new contract. So watching basically the yield here. Um, yields below 15 is we feel is quite bearish for euro. Yields above 15 will yield to it. Will yield to a squeeze. <laughs> um, we yield a squeeze. So we'll be watching that uh, to help us decide what's going on with Draghi and the band, the, the band of ECB brothers. What else is going on? Cable holding up. There was like all sorts of squirrely news last night about last minute meetings and breakups and I can't begin to understand uh, what the hell is going on. I was with some uh, government guys from uh, the UK the UK mission here in Switzerland last night and uh, they literally all said the same thing. Uh, no clue. No one has a clue. It's like a bunch of headless chickens driving uh, a bus with no brakes. Um, best way to describe it. The uh, the chart says there should be some stops here above uh, 132. We are not trading cable. Uh, I just wanted to mention it. It is holding up pretty well, I have to say, considering sort of the torrent of like no news and bad news and and you know cabinet now expects brexit deal defeats from the telegraph and and uh, you know forget i even said anything about cable let's look at this conundrum dollar yen as well uh, this looks like a friday trade to me weak non-farms and you can smoke dollar yen strong non-farms you can buy it problem with smoking it is like we said yesterday you're selling it right into this big big uh, support region this is um, 200 day now which really capped it there for a while uh, I, I would say the surprise move would be a strong non farms and dollar yen continued higher technically that is not a surprise because just based on the candlesticks we should all be long dollar yen here although most of my uh, brethren out that I that I follow or that I know are, are all trying to go short um, candlesticks are staying long are saying go long uh, and but we're gonna have to wait I think uh, until non farms and Powell to uh, make a decision on this let's go to ES real quick uh, this thing petered down it's trading around 2766 right now as I said this is delayed here uh, the big moment is 27.50. This is where a lot of the puts are going to kick in, including our puts. Um, so, just got to keep an eye on this. It was a pretty bearish day yesterday. Why was it bearish? Uh, don't know. I mean, obviously, we're 20% top to tail um, from the uh, from the December lows, so that's ridiculous. Uh, you know, is everything priced in? I don't know. Uh, at this point, it's better just to follow price. It's, you know, we have our bias, we're short, uh, but now you need price to confirm and price to control risk. A lot of these structures, like ours, uh, are for June, so you get a lot of time here. Um, and so I would encourage uh, some delta play because even though it's fun to be bearish stocks and most professionals uh, professional tactical traders or ex hedge fund guys or whatever you want to call uh, you know our horde of of Twitter click we all love being short because short is like uh, elevator down long is like escalator up but it needs to be said you know 85 percent of the time the stock market does go up and historically it has an upside bias so don't get carried away yet this isn't the end of the world yet 
you just need to follow price price is your guide you have your bias whether you're long or short our bias is short based on the fundamentals price is now quietly confirming it um, but don't get don't marry this right I mean through 2750 it should just get smoked and if it doesn't you know very similarly to yesterday through 113 the figure euro should have been smoked on that news but it wasn't and what did that mean the market was too short we traded up to 25 yada 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 um, so let's see let's see on 2715 let's remain open-minded obviously you know we're short but we need to control risk uh, and be sensible with it. Okay. What else? Euro yen uh, should be rolling over a little bit harder than this with boons where they are. We caught this little upside move in Euro yen, but we've been <laughs> we really haven't done much with it recently. Uh, this could be your horse if the growth assessment is really really low and the LTROs come into play today could be euro dollar but also could be euro yen it's kind of like the same trade right because dollar yen vol is basically zero so if you're more comfortable trading euro yen go ahead if you're more comfortable trading euro dollar go ahead obviously the liquidity in euro dollar will be slightly greater uh, so keep that in mind finally uh, Let's look at the hardest currency trade currency pair out there to trade, dollar Swiss. Or second hardest cable, I think is the hardest. 10061 is our next little uh, next little hurdle to clear. Uh, this looks very constructive. It makes no sense. Even with risk off, dollar Swiss is staying relatively bid. Um, we're just confused. Is this going to trade 101? on Friday sure looks like it um, and now if you put this whole puzzle together you're like wow Draghi's going to be marginally bearish people are starting to fade dollar yen and it looks like they're probably going to get caught dollar yen is mysterious dollar swiss is mysteriously bid um, seems like to me the way this movie is going to play out is we're going to get a good number uh, on Friday. And a lot of the naysayers and a lot of the doubters and a lot of the people who are giving loads of great reasons to be short dollars are, are, are going to get caught. Um, this is just intuition. This is just a feeling I have. Um, again, you got to be open-minded on these things. But it's nice to have a scenario both sides. So, just food for thought. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about Dollar Swiss tomorrow. Today we're basically uh, just waiting for Draghi. Uh, as we get closer, we'll have some more specific uh, specific strategies for Euro Yen and Euro Dollar. Although this morning we do have uh, some bond auctions in Europe. 10-year uh, oats auction in France. We've got Spanish 10-year uh, as well. We get the final uh, GDP numbers out of Euro, which I don't expect a big move. Retail sales out of Italy, no one cares. You get some minor numbers here, but effectively we're just waiting for Draghi uh, and, and to see what he's going to do uh, with the LTROs. All right, I'll leave it with that. Uh, good luck today. Make some dough, and I'll see you tomorrow.